Alright, check it out. I just finished machining these things, and I made it to where uh, you can slide this in and out, but when you take this steel plate that came with this thing, you put this in place, and it makes it to where it not only keeps it from sliding in and out, but all the torque of the motor should be transferred into the steel plate, and then easily transferred into the aluminum. Because I'm pretty sure if I just mounted it like this, that's not going to work for very long. That's going to end up eating away at the aluminum, and then this axle is just going to end up spinning on here. So hopefully all the torque of the motor will be transferred into this steel plate, and then from the steel plate it will be easily transferred into the aluminum without damaging it. So next thing we're going to do is cut off the, uh, the original mounts on this swing arm and then line this thing up perfectly because I'm not able to, it's not really adjustable, but it doesn't need to be because we don't have a chain or anything. We're going to line this thing up perfectly and then weld this in place. So because I'm pretty much just butting these two together and then welding them together, I, I really don't want this weak point. So once I weld this together, I'll be adding this on both sides on the outside and uh, as well as this little one on the bottom on both sides just to strengthen it up just a little bit more because I really don't want to make this a weak point. I finally bought a big extension cord uh, just so I don't have to get this big, get the table right up to the door. And this thing was, 50, this thing's 50 feet long for 200 bucks. And I'm considering, what if I just buy a second one of these? 100 feet will get me into the shed, so therefore I no longer have to drag all this stuff out to the driveway. It may not be advisable putting two of these together and re spanning 100 feet with uh with this thing but this is uh look at the thickness of this power cable this thing was yeah 200 bucks for this so i think i can get, i can think i can make it work i'm gonna try i want to buy a second one of these and just see if it works mm, i forgot to turn on the argon <laughs> uh, whoops. Whoopsies. I'm gonna go 
regrind it. Okay, let's try this again. So I also had to weld on this chunk of aluminum on here and this is for the mount for the brake caliper and this basically just keeps it from rotating. start working on reassembly of this project I, we first need to do just a couple more things with this uh, with this frame and I think it's gonna be a lot easier to do that with it not assembled uh, we need to finish the this side and build a cover for this the the 51 amp hour battery that I bought for this project finally finally got here in the mail that took a long time it is the exact same size as the 46 amp hour battery but you guys were saying that amp hours really doesn't have anything to do with the physical size. It's more of like the capacity of the cells and something like that. I don't know. That's, that sounds right. I don't know anything about electronics, so I'm just uh, going to believe you guys. And the controller that I finally decided to buy for this thing is, because uh, I was looking at two of them, uh, I bought the bigger version of the, of the one that came with this uh, frame and it is the ND721-200. I, I decided to buy that one because it's a little bit smaller than the other one I was looking at. It, it was more expensive, but apparently it's like, it has better reviews and uh, there's a couple videos on YouTube of people like tuning these things. So I know that people do use them and it does seem to work and it's rated for between 10 to 12,000 watts. So we can tune it for, uh, Whatever we want to use for that hub motor, I want to see what the, I want to see what that thing can do. So I'm t I may just tune it for 12 and just see if it survives. But uh, anyway, we have to finish the the opening on the frame. We need to cut this out so therefore we can fit the battery and the controller in here. I looked up the uh, the controller size of the controller that I bought, and it's, and it's pretty much this size as well as this tall. It does have a heat sink on the bottom, so I need to make sure that that's not. Uh, it has somewhat of an airflow in here. I'm not sure if I, uh, I... I think you're more supposed to mount the controllers on the outside, but there's... then it wouldn't be... then it, then we get then we get wet, so I'm not sure how that would work. So I'm just going to mount it on the inside, and then if we have any overheating issues, I may try to figure out how to run a fan in here. So, let's figure out uh, the size opening that we need and uh, start cutting it out.
Yeah, I didn't bother showing, uh, putting in the rest of them, but there are 17 total. Okay, so before we start assembly of this project, I'm really curious how much does this rear tire weigh? It's gotta weigh like, oh, I wanna say like 50 pounds. It's not, this thing is not, it is not light. I got this scale from good old Harbor Freight, paid like 20 something bucks for it. So let's see if it works. <sighs> All right, how much is it? How much does it weigh? <laughs> 60, 65 pounds. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold it up without putting any weight on it. 64 to 65 pounds. Oh, that's not good. That is, um, that's not good. <laughs> I knew this thing weighed a lot. I didn't know it weighed that much. 65 pounds of so I know you, some of you guys have commented this, the, the downside, the downside to hub motors is this is all unsprung weight. So there is 65 pounds of unsprung weight on the back tire, which means I, this thing's gonna be super heavy in the back end. Uh, I have to be really careful where I drive this thing. I cannot hit any rocks or any, I can't, Otherwise, I could end up busting the rim, breaking the tire, breaking the bead and everything. So there's, there's that to consider when, you know, buying hub motors is, yeah, this is unsprung weight and it's not the, I, I didn't really think about, I didn't really think about that when I first saw this thing. All I thought was, oh, it's going to be awesome. There's no chains, there's no sprockets, there's no chain noise, it's going to be super quiet. I didn't know that this thing was going to weigh 65 freaking pounds. But there's not much I can do about that now. So, and there's a reason why most high-end electric mountain bikes, electric dirt bikes, there's a reason why those things are always uh, mid-drive, the electric motor's in the frame, so therefore it's sprung weight. And your more cheaper things is hub motors, so... Yeah, that, that's something to, th something to think of when... Uh, when uh, you know, deciding if you want to buy one of these things. So, it is now time to start working on assembly of this project. The frame is it's not done, but it's mostly done. We still need to do the seat and everything, which I don't want to do until it's assembled, so therefore I can get the level and everything. And uh, we also have to do the, the shock, the top shock mount uh, for that. But this thing is, is now ready to start working on reassembly of this project.
Okay, so because because I'm trying to lower the seat on this thing so I can actually I can actually touch the ground while sitting on this, uh, it's creating a bit a bit of a challenge because now the seat and now this frame is hitting the top of the shock. Also, I'm not really sure what happened here, but uh, I I tried to make it to where this part of the seat and this is flush, and you can see that uh, they're not flush. This is you know you know that's that's not. I'm not sure what happened when I uh, when I when I made you know put made this uh, top piece. I put that frame next to it. I put the gas tank on top. I put the seat on, and I looked at the angle of the seat, and I tried to match it on this and just have it a little bit lower. So I'm. Not sure what happened there because this is way steeper of an angle than uh, than this, but I I can fudge that. Uh, I've been I have been trying to figure out how can I have that. I don't want to have this like a, a completely sealed enclosure because the controller gets hot, the battery may get hot, and I need some sort of vents in here. So what I could do is I could make a top plate that's raised up at the angle up that this is and then cut a big hole in this and then there'll be like a you know this area for at least some airflow and I can weld on side pieces and there'll just be an opening that's you know can get airflow but no water can get in because I have the I'm gonna try to make some kind of you know cover for the for the seat and I'm also using this so I could do that that could work out that could make it to where I can have some airflow in this and then possibly have more vents somewhere on the bottom something so I could uh, I could fudge that and could actually you know work to our advantage of actually having some uh, vent holes on this thing that can you know not not allow water to get into this thing. So now I think uh, I think the next step is let's work on the mount for the shock. It has to be has to be really strong because this is pretty much what uh, what takes most of the weight on this thing. Most of my weight is being put on this. We have to make a mount on here that's really strong. It's this eighth of an inch, uh, so I'm probably gonna have to weld another plate on here and then do some gusseting and mounts and all that kind of stuff just to, uh, just to make it nice and strong. material on the bottom right there. Some clearance issues, uh, give me a second to address them. I had to take some more material off of uh, this right here, so let's see if it'll work now.
this thing is finally starting to resemble a dirt bike again. Uh, now, th these mounts, they're definitely not done. I need to add a bunch, I need to add a bunch of cross bracing and more plates on here because I can't simply just attach this to the top panel. This is only eighth of an inch thick uh, plate steel or plate aluminum. So there's no way it would survive just being attached like this. So I need to add uh, more plates. I'm gonna add another one right here that's, uh, basically I just need to distribute the force being put on this thing. I need to distribute that to the side panels because these are the, uh, the side panels are the thicker material and the top and bottom are thinner just to try to save a little bit more weight. So this thing is uh, looking pretty, I, I really like the look of this. I was a little nervous that that's the, the aluminum box was gonna be, was gonna look a little too big and bulky, but now that this thing is assembled, I think it looks, uh, I think it looks pretty awesome. It looks unique, I guess. Unique is a, a good word to d describe this thing. So next video of this project is gonna be, we need to add the seat mounts. However we're gonna do that, that's gonna be a little bit challenging. Um, then we can start working on brakes, we need to hook up the rear brakes, and possibly start working on wiring this project. So. Now, I'm not sure when the uh, the bigger controller that I bought for this thing, who knows when that thing's gonna get here. I bought it from China. Uh, if it doesn't get here in time to do the wiring, I'm, just, I'm tempted just to hook up the 5,000 watt controller that came with this thing just to see what this thing will do. And then once the new controller, the bigger controller I bought for this thing gets here, we can uh, put it on and kind of compare the two to see how, how faster this thing is with the bigger controller and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.